So first, I want to give a big, massive thank you to Chris Stuckman for including me in his video, Stuckman Suggests. Chris, thank you so much. That was awesome. And if you guys haven't checked out his videos, which you totally should, and I imagine most of you already have, but in case you haven't, just check out his channel at this link, or you can just click on the link in the description. Also, I will be at Fan Expo this year on Friday, August 29th, 2014. So if you're gonna be at Fan Expo on that day, if you find me, I will give you a free Fanboy Flicks t-shirt. And I wish I had one to show you guys, but they're currently being printed right now. So you're just gonna have to use your crazy imaginations to picture a blue shirt with the Fanboy Flicks logo on it. And if you still can't do that, then here. Should look like that. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I have seen a lot of bad movies, but the one thing I can say about all of them so far is that at least they were trying to make an effort to make sense. Well, all that stops here. This movie seems like it just keeps trying to do random things in an effort to be funny, which of course doesn't work, so then it just keeps going. You know, I remember seeing the previews for this movie when it first came out and thinking to myself, that looks like one of the worst movies ever made. I've enjoyed some of Dana Carvey's comedy before on SNL and Wayne's World, but I don't know what this is supposed to be. I just can't picture him sitting there writing this script thinking, oh yeah, this will be good. I just, I can't, I can't do it. It doesn't make sense. Maybe this whole thing was just a giant practical joke. That actually makes more sense than the actual movie. It's almost like something he would just scribble down as an idea on a napkin one day. Just a guy who's a master at disguising himself. And then they just ran with it and turned it into a whole movie. And who is this movie for anyways? Is this supposed to be a kid's movie? Is that who all of these stupid jokes and impressions are aimed towards? Yeah, Jaws reference. I'm sure all the kids will get that one. Or how about Scarface? That seems appropriate. And The Exorcist, because, you know, we all remember seeing that at an early age. And you could say that those jokes are aimed at the adult portion of the audience. The only problem is that they've already left. I think the best use for this movie is as something to show meth heads. To scare them off of drugs. Just show them this movie, like, you see this? This is what you're like all the time. Yeah. Wake up call. And the worst part about this movie is that it actually made money. $43 million on a $16 million budget. That's not bad. Especially for one of the worst movies ever made. So Dana Carvey plays this character named Pistachio Disguise. And there's no way I'm going to be saying that throughout this review. So I'm just going to call him Dana. Anyways, the movie starts by explaining that Dana's family has this long legacy of disguising themselves and stopping evil. Yep, that's uh, quite the legacy you got there. So his father doesn't want him to follow in his footsteps of being a master of disguise for some reason. But, you know, actually it kind of makes sense because we all know how dangerous it can be putting on costumes. But of course he can't stop him from doing it. It's funny because if this was any other family, I'm pretty sure that any father walking in on his grown son doing something like this would prompt a pretty quick trip to the nut house. Dana's character is a bumbling 23-year-old Italian waiter, which is interesting considering that he was around twice that age when they were shooting this. Seriously, he was 47 when this movie came out. This guy asked for meatballs, and for whatever reason, this puts Dana into some kind of trance where he starts mocking everyone. We're only 10 minutes into this movie and already the evidence is really piling up that this character needs an immediate psychological evaluation. Anyways, these thugs show up and start trying to kidnap his mother and father and for some reason his dad just starts fighting them very casually as if this is a common thing. I, I don't know what's going on here. They put his mother in some kind of kitchen prison with caramel corn or some crap. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Dana Carvey starts talking about a cannoli. 
I, I don't know, man. Seriously. Hello? A place in my home? It is full of ransacery. Everything different. What am I? And my name is Pistachio. And oh, Mama's cannoli is here. Don't call again. Wait, uh, ah. At this point in the movie, I just couldn't figure out why he thought any of this would be a good idea. Was the script just a bunch of random words all over the paper? Just telephone, cannoli, kidnap. So then his grandfather shows up and tells him he's gonna teach him how to become a master of disguise. I'm going to be a master of disguise. I'm going to be a master of disguise. Seriously, what is this? It's just a sequence of Dana Carvey making a bunch of silly faces and lame slapstick humor. So Data from Star Trek plays the bad guy in this movie. Just, God, that's, that's a dive off the deep end. Anyways, he kidnapped Dana's father, Fabrizio, I don't know, and he wants him to disguise himself in order to steal him a bunch of priceless national treasures. And how do we end this scene? With a fart joke. And a lame one at that. <laughs> so the bad guy gets Fabrizio to steal the US Constitution by disguising himself as Michael Johnson and borrowing it? And they just gave it to him? Really? This was the plan? Not disguising yourself as one of the guards and doing some kind of sneaky heist? No, just pretending to be an athlete because of course they would lend the US Constitution to a guy who's famous for running. And how do we end this scene? Take a guess. <laughs> I'm serious when I say that some of these scenes really have no point. So they find part of a cigar that leads them to the Turtle Club, and Dana thinks a good disguise would be to dress up as a turtle. Why would this be a good disguise? Wouldn't a good disguise be one that helps you blend in? Not stick out like a circus freak? Then he bites off some guy's nose and spits it back onto his face? I don't even know what to tell you. I really don't. I didn't even write anything for that. I'm sorry? Now the bad guy gets Fabrizio to steal the Liberty Bell by disguising himself as Jesse Ventura. Because, of course, why should anything make sense anymore? Nothing's made sense so far. Why start now? <laughs> They go to the bad guy's party to investigate him, and I'm seriously not joking when I say that if you watch this movie, you might end up feeling insulted by it. I really don't know how else to describe it to you. It's like having a really weird dream that goes on and on, and all you want to do is just wake up! <laughs> wake up, Mark. Please wake up. From the village of Konstopolakos, Holy Halabasas, Holahada. Two thugs start chasing him down until he disguises himself as Quint from Jaws, which at first is kind of a nice little movie reference until it goes on and on and on. Then once they see his arm, somehow that's the indication that he's the guy they were looking for. I'm not, I'm not even, I'm, no, 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 no! Not doing it! I'm not even going to begin to talk about how stupid this is because I have to make time to talk about the part where he disguises himself as a pile of cow crap. Which actually works, but then it doesn't when he ruins the disguise. Then we're treated to this ridiculous chase around town. And why is the inside of this house so blue? It looks terrible. If I didn't know any better, I'd swear it was shot on the wrong film stock. And I don't know any better, it probably was shot on the wrong film stock, because who gives a shit? But it really doesn't matter because this is all garbage anyways, it's just him talking nonsense as a bunch of different characters, there's no plot progression or character development, because why would there be? I believe that Devlin Bowman has forced my papa to become a master of disguise once more. 
in order to steal rare treasures from around the world. Yes. Wait, what? He knows all of this just by looking at some photos of celebrities that they found at the bad guy's house? So suddenly he knocks some water over onto the people sitting at the table next to them. And then they realize it's actually Jennifer's boyfriend with another woman. Really? You've been sitting next to him this whole time and you didn't even notice? You didn't hear his voice or anything like that? It took this retard acting like an idiot in order to reveal it. At some point during this fight, Dana takes out the guy's wallet and steals his credit cards. Why? Well, why does he do this? It's kind of like how he stole the money of basically every single person that paid to see this movie. So this time Fabrizio dresses up as Jessica Simpson to steal the Apollo lunar module. <laughs> Dana uses this ball to talk to his grandfather's floating head inside of a bubble, even though it's just a pre-recorded hologram, so What's the point of it? There's magic in this movie? I have no idea what's going on. Dana dresses up as a pie. Um, there's ninjas in here. Uh, his mother says she'll never eat caramel corn again. Then Fabrizio and Dana are fighting because Fabrizio has dressed up as the bad guy and he believes that he is him. Even if you didn't get that, it doesn't make any, it doesn't matter. I don't know, he just shakes his head and the disguise goes away for whatever reason. Probably has to do with magic, who cares? So in the end, I think they kill the bad guy by throwing him into a swimming pool. Of course, you gotta have one last fart joke in there. Oh, thank God it's done. You know, the weird thing is, is that when I watch these movies, it's horrible, but there's this odd sense of achievement when I make it through them, especially when I get to cross it off my list. Yes! I actually love doing this show. I can't stop now. I need more bad movies all the time. I think watching them, for some reason, it keeps, keeps my sanity. Even though all my friends keep saying that I'm starting to lose my sanity. So, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Would I watch Son of the Mask over this? Yeah, I probably would. That's weird. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs>